Winter is coming and Iranian state-backed daily is supposed to have warned the European powers as negotiations continue over the Iran nuclear deal. And it does look like for many countries in Europe, the crisis is set to escalate over the next few months. Over the past few days, we have seen how Russia, for instance, has stopped supplies on the Nord Stream 1 pipeline. There is a lot of concern over gas supplies, what will happen uh, in the energy market. Prices are increasing. Both the British and the German governments have stepped in to try to assuage their population, they've stepped, they've brought in energy caps, for instance, or measures to support their population. However, all this does not really explain why this is happening and what is likely to happen in the coming months as well. We'll be discussing all this in Mapping Fault Lines. We have with us Prabir Purkaista. So, Praveer, we've seen uh, protests break out in many parts of the world over the issue of inflation. We know that in the UK for months, Trade unions, other sectors have been protesting. Germany recently saw a mass rally by opposition parties, other parts of Europe as well. And we're not even going into the other parts of the world. But taking Europe specifically, a key concern seems to be the question of energy. Now, there are two aspects to it. One is, of course, the Russian decision to stop the supply to Nord Stream 1 because of sanctions imposed by the Western European countries. But also the question of uh, rising energy costs, which are connected, uh, which have more dimensions than just the gas supply. So could you maybe take us through why energy has become such a key fault line at this point of time? Well, let's put it this way, that the European fault line is energy. Because if you see how Europe looked at itself from the beginning, at least post the Second World War, was that it was an industrial power. It command the industrial uh, market, of course, with the United States, which is also a major industrial power at that stage. And it was built on the fact that it would be able to access from the 60s onwards, it was built on the fact it will be able to access uh, Russian gas at that time, Soviet Union, but really uh, the major part of the gas fields were in Russia. So Russian gas. So energy would come or cheap energy would come, stable supply from Russian gas, and then there would be an industrial power. They could phase out coal later as coal became identified as a dirty fuel. But in Germany, the shift was also because their ability to mine coal was causing subsidence. And there was a lot of resistance to that. So they had to phase out coal also. And importing coal again became with climate change a problem. And therefore, they looked at the Russian gas. But behind all this, and this is done at the time that Helmut Kohl and was in power, so it was really a bipartisan decision that, that this would also bring peace to Europe. So therefore, tying Soviet Union at that stage and the European Union's economy with cheap energy would be a long-term solution that there would be no war. So this is obviously what is breaking down now. Now, European Union is pretending to be very hurt at the fact that Russia has imposed different sanctions saying, okay, uh, if you don't buy in rubles and I don't sell to you, which at the time they protested, they went back to buying in rubles, though with the, some kind of uh, swap taking place within the Russian bank itself. So they could say, we didn't buy it in rubles, we actually bought it in euros, but all said and done that they accepted this condition. But as they have been threatening more and more sanctions on Russian gas, Russian oil, other sanctions, insurance and so on. I think Russia has also now taken to it, okay, we don't have a long, long term stake in your market. So we can actually start not supplying you gas from earlier. They're still saying Nord Stream 2, if you want. They're also supplying some gas to Ukraine. Even now, some pipeline to Ukraine is still supplying gas. So it is not that they have completely cut off gas, but they are now saying sanctions because of your gas turbine, the, whatever is to be done on the repairs of the gas turbine is violating your sanctions. So you withdraw your sanctions on the gas turbine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Leaving all of that out, the reality is that the Russian retaliation to European Union sanctions, and don't forget, they have seized or at least frozen $150 billion, probably more, of Russian money from Russia's central bank and other banks in Europe. Those, that money was in European banks. They have effectively seized it, though they're calling it freezing. So already that part is there. So you cannot talk about bad blood 
and how your retaliation weaponizing gas, which uh, for instance, the European Union president is saying, without taking into account that you have actually weaponized finance. You have weaponized the, the money that uh, you know, is needed for international trade, both with dollar and with euros and with yen. Three of these financial blocks got together to do uh, what was essentially a, declare a financial war through Russian banks out of the SWIFT system and so on. So given that this is the retaliation that has come, the question is, why has the electricity prices risen by right. four to six times even more in some of the countries when gas is not the only source of production of energy? In fact, in France, it hardly produces 25 to 30 percent of energy. A lot of it was new is nuclear. In uh, other countries also, there is some part which is produced by gas, but there is non, non the renewables are now in online. Some nuclear is also there. And some part of coal is still there. It's not been phased out completely. So given that, how much of the electricity price rise should take place because of the gas price rising is a question. And it is an interesting question because Germany, only 11% of the or 15 percent of the production of electricity is through gas large parts of it is through other means so why is the electricity price also rising by four to six times sometimes even higher when the cost of gas is only a small fraction of the amount of uh, fuel cost for the electricity sector and that is really to do with a complex market that the European Union has built in which the last block of power which is accepted on the grid, that price becomes the power price for everybody. And that means those who are say, using coal currently, they're still using coal, nuclear, wherever it's possible, and of course, renewables, which extra energy is really free. That means whatever you are getting out of that, the in incremental cost is really free, but it is charged as if it is bought and the it's really being bought or it is being produced using the most expensive fuel, which is gas. Now, this is the unfortunately the uh, mechanism which has been set in place in European Union, other countries like UK too. And that is the cause of this really, really sharp price rise, which is though it is blamed on gas and Russia, this is not the entire. In fact, the much bigger is that you built an energy market, electricity market, conforming to something which is theoretically you believe in, but it's nothing to do with the actual price of electricity or the actual price of oil. That's interesting, Prabir, because you're putting forward an argument which I think we're not talking too much about in terms of how electricity markets are structured in the first place. So could you maybe take us a bit more to that before we look at the larger implications? You know, this is the product of what was originally the counter revolution, if you want to call it, or the really the brutal dictatorship that Pinochet government brought in Chile. Ma massacres, large scale violations of uh, rights of the people, putting thousands and tens of thousands of people in jail, etc. One of the consequences of the Pinochet coup in Chile uh, was the electricity market which it was created. This is really Milton Friedman and what's called his Chicago Boys who created the market, which they use something called marginal utility price, which is the last electricity uh, entering the cost of the, the price of the last electricity unit entering the grid is the price for the entire electricity production. This is an economic theory. Uh, as uh, Vanus Yarifakis has uh, said, the former uh, Minister of uh, Finance for Greece has said, this is all mythology of the market. This is really not what happens. This is something which is completely artificially created. And let's be clear why it was created. It was created to incentivize private investments in electricity and give them more than adequate returns. And that was what was done in Chile. It was private electricity sector was privatized. This is followed by Margaret Thatcher, who privatized the CEGB, effectively broke it up. It was a integrated utility, broke it up. And again, they took the same argument. What is the latest last unit of price electricity entering the grid? That is a price for the grid. 
Now, this is, this is the, uh, shall we say, a very artificial construct which has been created of how in software and everything has been put in place to measure it, how it is to be done. It's a complex system that has been put behind it. But the, the, in, the in, entire argument was really that this is the way we can incentivize private players. And it was in order to privatize the electricity sector at a mass scale. This is what the European Union has also followed. So what you see is the market is really this, that there are buckets or time slots. For each time slot, there are bids by private players who are the generators. The grid and distribution, they are still integrated in Europe. They then see in each time slot what is the most expensive power, and that becomes the electricity price for everybody, even if that power which is supplied is only a very small fraction of power entering the grid at that time slot. What it does then is if wind is free, solar is free, because that's really not dependent on, on any fuel, that electricity also get priced at the most expensive fuel price cost, which is LNG. Now, this is the, uh, shall we say, the problem with this kind of artificial construct of the market. It's not linked to the price of production. It is linked to what is called the marginal utility price, which is, as I said, the last electricity block that enters the market. If it is the most expensive, then for all other electricity that has been supplied for that time slot, that becomes a price. That is why, even though, for instance, in Germany, uh, gas is only 15% of the cost of production, I mean, only 15% of the electricity is produced by gas, that price of electricity has risen by six times. This is, this means somebody is making money. Who's, who are making money? Those who have for price of electricity production is very low. They are making a killing out of it. Old coal plants or some nuclear plants which are being phased, were being phased out, which are still being uh, really being used now. And of course, all renewables. So people's anger is also against the renewables. It's not helping me. The price of electricity is going up. They are making a killing. So all this is also true for England. For instance, UK. UK has not sea gas, but it is also pegged to the most expensive gas that they buy. And that is why the price rise for the consumer is coming out to be four to six times, or if you take a two year scenario, it could be as, as, as large as about 10 times. And then the people who are facing winter, don't forget, the winter is still to come. You're going to get heating issues in Europe. It's going to be damn cold if you're in UK or your parts of uh, Europe. So there the question will be, do I find, buy food or do I, uh, by it'll pay for electricity. This is the choice that's to be there of asking or looking for windfall profits being taxed or taken away, gas prices being subsidized. What they're doing is essentially giving money to the uh, electricity producer. They're not willing to touch this and some kind of subsidy to the consumers, which will be given by the state. So protect private profits balance somewhat the bills that are going to come giving people money, but do not look at the fundamental nature of the electricity market, which as I said, Varoufakis has a nice article where he says, blow up this irrational electricity market. That's the cause of the problem currently. Prabir, but looking at these arguments, then what we see is on the one hand, the government's unwilling to cut down on the profits of private corporations. Uh, on the other hand, facing an issue in terms of having access to uh, energy and therefore you're resorting to certain ways of, you know, certain monetary ways to basically control inflation because inflation is one of the biggest problems facing, facing people right now. So they're going to ha uh, hike interest rates at this point. But keeping all this in mind, is there, for many countries in Europe, are we looking at a very dangerous situation where the economy is going to crumble because of this? There's no question that this is going to be a very difficult situation for the common people. And that is because while the price of electricity may be partly subsidized, only going to be partly subsidized, the private profits are going to be high. But this is not an issue where you can control inflation by raising the interest rate. Now, that is because this, uh, this, there is a shortage of now of gas. Now, by using a 
market instruments like interest rate. This is not going to problem. This is not solve the problem of increasing supply. If increasing cheap gaps, gas supplies or energy creating energy is the problem, it is not not going to be a, you know done by adjusting the inflation rate. So what's going to happen? Price of electricity rises. A whole bunch of industries also become uneconomical. What are they? Steel, stainless steel, for example, aluminium, cement. We can go on. Fertilizers. There is a whole bunch of industries. Uh, glass, for instance. So a number of these industries, then if they become uneconomical, and they are, they are shutting down at the moment. That means loss of jobs. So raising the interest rate is not going to solve these kind of issues that are coming. So in fact, that that is why what we are likely to see, and this is also true in a larger sense in the global economy, that if in energy prices are rise like this, and now the G7 has said they will sanction if you buy uh, Russian gas above a certain price. Right. So effectively, you are you are going to uh, use the financial weapons against other countries too. Now, all of this is going to lead to a station say, situation where people are saying this is really a formula for stagflation. That this is not something you can handle with only monetary means, which means you need to return to a path of peace, see how the situation can be solved, and therefore the need for negotiated settlement and coming back to the table. It's peace which will solve the problem. Continuing wars, economic First, the physical war, of course, that is what is causing all of this. Then the economic war, the information war, all of this is not going to solve the problem that you are facing. So I think that's a very important element that Europe is facing the problem that the energy market, which actually energy flows, the energy market that provides the balance to the EU's economy, that is not going to be solved. That problem is not going to be solved by tinkering with the interest rate, which is the only monetary instrument that is being thought of at the moment. And in, at least in UK, we don't know what uh, European Union is going to be, uh, European Union is going to do. There is no attempt to talk about the market reforms. There is no attempt to talk about, let's have a look at how the regulation should be done for the electricity sector. There is in fact, the only discussion is, well, should we have windfall profits? taxing windfall profits, and how much should we give to the people. So the basic structure is going to be left as is. So your issue is, your point that you're making is very well founded, that this is not going to solve the problem for the European economy, because with this electricity prices, we have already seen shutting down of a number of industries in Germany, for example, which is the biggest you know, manufacturing power still in Europe. And if that happens, Europe is going to be in a much harder place. The US is still protected. It has its own, you know, it produces gas and oil. So it is not that open to the kind of market fluctuations you see. They're not going to be able to help EU, European Union much in spite of all they have said, because their own LNG facilities have suffered some setbacks. There have been some accidents. They have released about a huge amount from their strategic reserves for keeping the prices stable. They cannot release much more. In fact, they have to charge the special reserves that they have given, they have put into the market. So with all of this, US, though it is not going to suffer the same way, it has problems vis-a-vis -vis manufactured goods in China, but it's not going to suffer the same way with energy. But the European Union is really going to see its economy take a huge hit because of the energy it has brought for itself. The reason that it is not addressing any of the electricity market issues, which they again is self-created, and the fact that they believe that doubling down on sanctions and play, playing hardball with Russia will solve the solve their problems because Russia at some point will come to its knees. I don't think that is likely to happen. We are in for some really tough times in the international uh, arena. Don't forget, all of this affects everybody. There is a food crisis. There is a, a primary, you know, fertilizer crisis. All of these are also along with what we are seeing. And what's an energy crisis for Europe is also an energy crisis for a lot of other parts of the world. 
Thank you so much, Prabir, for that analysis. That's all we have time for today. We'll be tracking many such issues around energy as well as the larger war in coming episodes of Mapping Fault Lines. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.